Clipper, Clipper English, Clipper was an early 2000s proposed partly reusable manned spacecraft concept by RSC Energia. Due to lack of funding from the ESA and RSA, the project was indefinitely postponed by 2006. Designed primarily to replace the Soyuz spacecraft, Clipper was proposed in two versions, as a pure lifting body design and as spaceplane with small wings. In either case, the craft would have been able to glide into the atmosphere at an angle that produces much less stress on the human occupants than the current Soyuz. Clipper was intended to be designed to be able to carry up to six people and to perform ferry services between Earth and the International Space Station. Topic. Development Topic. Announcement of the program In February 2004 Nikolai Moiseev, the deputy director of Russian Federal Space Agency FSA, told journalists that the Clipper project had been included in the Russian Federal Space Program for 2005-15. At that point he announced that if the program is implemented successfully the first launch may even take place in five years' time. Clipper had been developed since 2000 and reportedly relied heavily on research studies as well as proposals for a small Russian lifting body spacecraft from the 1990s. Externally its design was comparable to the cancelled European mini-shuttle Hermes or the NASA Study X-38. It was planned to be the successor to the veteran spacecraft Soyuz, which has been built in various modifications since 1961. Topic: Early search for support. In 2005, Clipper was displayed in several air shows around Europe and Asia in order to reach out to international partners who would be interested to co-fund and co-develop the spacecraft. The Russian Space Agency especially looked to Europe as the European Space Agency (ESA) had become its major partner in space activities during the last years. In May 2005 rumors started in the press that Europe would join the Clipper project in a specially funded venture that would be part of the Aurora program. These rumors turned out to be correct when both Russian and European space officials announced their cooperation to build Clipper during the Paris Air Show in Le Bourget on June 10, 2005. Vladimir Tenev, the leading designer of the Clipper system, speculated on the contribution of Europe to the project in the following way. The European companies will likely contribute avionics, materials, and cabin systems. Many different options are on the table, and in the near future we expect to form Russian-European working groups specialized in different subsystems and fields of design. The Russian Space Agency as well as ESA announced that they would continue to look for other international partners such as Japan to invest in Clipper. A substantive cooperation with NASA was unlikely, due to the parallel development of America's own next-generation manned launch vehicle, the Crew Exploration Vehicle CEV. A further element of this process was made public on October 12, 2005, when various press agencies revealed that JAXA, the Japanese space agency, had been officially approached by Russia to participate in the project. JAXA has made it clear that they are more likely to join the project if ESA does so first, which was in doubt after ESA members rejected a study for Europe's involvement in the Clipper project in December 2005. The addition of Japan would make Clipper a truly multinational project, potentially combining the rugged reliability of Russian launchers with Japanese computer technology. A greater pan-national consensus would have allowed for a lighter funding burden on each participant as well. Topic. Estimated costs Announcements and speculations following the February 2004 press conference suggested a development budget of $10 billion, about $400 million. 
However, in looking at today's costs for human space travel it was clear that the 10 billion rubles figure was a rather low estimate. In May 2005 The Guardian reported that costs are estimated to be roughly $3 billion for development and construction of Clipper until 2015 of which the bulk of $1,800,000,000 was speculated to come from Europe. Different sources in 2005 have reported that the money needed for the program would be €1,500,000,000 about dollars and on December 12, 2005 an article stated it would be €1 billion Euros solely in relation to development costs. On July 14, 2005 the Russian government approved the National Space Program for 2006 to 2015 with a budget of $305 billion about about $11 billion. The whole budget for the 10-year period was to have been $425 billion, about $15 billion. The budget included the needed funding for the Clipper program. Thus in face of Europe's denial to fund a €50 million Euros feasibility study for the Clipper project at the European Space Summit in December 2005, Russian space officials have announced that Russia would fund Clipper even without any European contribution. The most recent article on Clipper stated that the project would have incurred £16 billion about $600 million in development costs, £11 billion of which will be financed by the government and £5 billion by contractors. Topic. First launch and target for regular flights In 2004 it was announced that it was likely that Clipper would make its first launch as early as 2010 or 2011, the same time the Space Shuttle was scheduled to be retired. However, it was reported by BBC News on September 27, 2005, that the first flight tests were not planned until 2011, with the first manned flights in 2012 and the Soyuz being phased out over time until 2014. An article on December 3, 2005 cited the president of the Energia Rocket and Space Corporation Nikolai Sevastyanov that the first regular lift off is scheduled for 2012, while a complete transport system will be in place by 2015. After the termination of the Russian Space Agency's tender for a new spacecraft, Energia announced that this would push its Clipper proposal's first flight if developed at all back further. In the event, the development project did not continue. Topic. ESA's part in Clipper — Uncertainty over European cooperation On September 28, 2005 the BBC reported that Alan Thurkettle, head of ESA's Human Spaceflight Development Department, stated that Clipper would be used for future exploration, when we have the objective of going to the Moon, it is important to have several possibilities to go there, and within this framework of cooperation to have our own access to orbit around the Moon. In the same context, Alain Fournier Sicker, head of the ESA permanent mission in the Russian Federation, also stated that the objective is to have a vehicle which is more comfortable than the Soyuz capsule which will be used with pilots and four passengers, it is meant to service the space station and to go between Earth and an orbit around the Moon with six crew members. Although there seemed to be a lot of enthusiasm for Clipper within Alan Thurkettle's team at ESA as outlined in the above paragraph, on December 7, 2005, the European Space Summit of governmental officials of ESA member states declined to approve a €50 million Euro two-year study focusing on ESA's potential involvement in the Clipper project. In denying funding for the study ESA members stated that, among other factors that seemed unfavorable, under the current Russian proposal Europe would not share control over the design of the program and would be limited to being a small industrial contributor. Jean-Jacques Dordain, ESA's Director General, put the refusal to fund the study into context. It is not a question of member states for and member states against. 
I think the decision could not be taken for reasons that are not linked to Clipper itself. The decision could not be taken because of budgetary restraints. Dordain concluded that he was convinced that European support for Clipper was vital for ESA's future involvement in space transport and that a favorable decision can be achieved until June 2006. In concluding, we need two transportation systems in the world. Dordain also outlined shortly after the European Space Summit that the primary requirement of Europe's involvement in the Clipper project was to rely on two separate systems to support the ISS as had been proven vital after the Columbia Space Shuttle disaster in 2003. Dordain's remarks were echoed by Daniel Sackhot, ESA's Director of Human Spaceflight, Microgravity and Exploration, in saying simply that the Russians are not going to finance it, we will finance it from our side." Despite adding a cautionary note that, "...we needed the support from at least two states out of France, Italy and Germany. We didn't get it." What this means in practical terms remains to be seen, however, what is clear is that ESA officials are still pushing for Europe's involvement in the Clipper project. Very negative comments relative to Clipper were brought by the various national delegations at the December meeting, in particular by the French Minister of Research François Gollard. In short, there remain for the time being member states strongly committed to Clipper, and others just as strongly opposed. The long-term view remains uncertain. In 2006, Jean-Jacques Dordain explained that money allocated to space transportation development, which ESA currently funds in the amount of $300 million for the next three years, could be used for Europe's involvement in the project. Given the February 2006 statement that 5 billion rubles, tilde dollar 200 million of the development costs will come from contractors. A limited involvement of ESA in Clipper might have been forthcoming. Topic: <inaudible> Russian Space Agency's tender for Clipper. At the end of 2005, Roscosmos announced that a tender for Clipper would be held in January 2006 between RKK Energia, Khrunichev and Molnia with a selection date of February 3, 2006. However concerns about the bids led to a delay in the process, with a resubmittal deadline of March, 2006 and selection was rescheduled for April 2006. Following further delays, the tender was cancelled on the 18th of July 2006. In late July 2006, the Russian Space Agency and the European Space Agency agreed to collaborate on a different project to develop a new spacecraft. They decided to fund a study under a program labeled Crew Space Transportation System CSTS, which started in September 2006 and evaluate a capsule-type concept, derived from Soyuz. While this program is the follow-on project of the RSA's and ESA's collaboration on a new space vehicle, this program is no longer connected to Energia's winged clipper design. RSC Energia continued to pursue the project without Russian government support and announced that it would seek private investment for the craft. News reports in Russia indicated that Clipper was still expected to be ready for Russian Space Agency test flights around the year 2012, as part of Russian spacecraft upgrade program. The project has been officially halted in June 2007, after the major proponent of the project, Nikolai Sevastyanov, was dismissed from the position of the president of RSC Energia. The newly appointed president of RSC Energia, Vitaly Lopota, confirmed that Clipper would not be displayed on the 2007 MOX Aviation and Space Show. He said that Energia would spend more time on the project analysis, perform additional dynamic modeling, revise the design and appearance and then would come up with new proposals for Roscosmos. In 2008 Vitaly Lopota shared his vision about new Russian spacecraft. He mentioned two possible options, a space capsule, which better suits missions to the Moon and Mars, and a lifted body design for low Earth orbit missions. 
According to new plans, instead of Clipper the new PPTS Russ will be developed since 2009 to 2017-2018. Topic. Design Given the Russian Space Agency's preference for Energia's lifting body proposal this part of the article concentrates entirely on Energia's design for Clipper. Topic. Overview Clipper's design was another attempt to solve the geometric problems of spacecraft. Soyuz has an orbital module, a hollow sphere, to be used for eating and hygiene, and an airlock located above the re-entry module, the capsule, with the docking mechanism at the top. In the event of an emergency, it would be lifted away from the rocket along with the re-entry module, and the fairing over the spacecraft was designed to successfully split apart either circumferentially just below the re-entry module in such an emergency or longitudinally if the flight should be successful. Clipper was designed with the orbital module below its re-entry module, and the docking mechanism below that. This was made possible by constructing a re-entry module broader than the orbital module, so that a pair of rocket nozzles for orbital maneuvering could have been fitted alongside it, as the later Salyut space stations had. In connection with this new design, Clipper would feature a launch escape system that would enable it to detach from the carrier rocket if an abort of the mission during orbital ascent is required. An abort would be possible during every phase of the launch with the limitation of the first seconds after launch. Topic. Lifting body design On return from space, Clipper's lifting body design would not only allow a smoother descent into Earth's atmosphere than the capsule design, such as Soyuz, but also permit control. RKK Energia claimed that the craft would be able to land in a predetermined 1 square kilometer area. Artistic impressions showed that the clipper would have resembled a cylinder topped by a cone. Originally, landing proposals involved both a landing by parachute and as an alternative, in a modified version, a landing on a runway similar to an aircraft, or the space shuttle. However, leading designer Vladimir Deneyev commented on this issue in June 2005. We are 99% sure that it will be a spaceship with upturned little wings, enabling the clipper to land on any Class I military airfield with a runway from 3 to 3.5 kilometers in length. Clipper, as a vehicle alone, would have been primarily a manned spaceship, carrying six cosmonauts and payloads of up to 700 kilograms, mostly experiments and other equipment used for carrying through experiments in orbit, and was planned to stay in orbit for approximately 15 days independently and for up to 360 days if docked to the International Space Station. This highlighted both the Russian, European and the American change in space transportation philosophy. Rather than focusing on the lifting of cargo and a crew, in the same way as the Space Shuttle or Buran, the Russian Space Agency adopted a people first philosophy with the aim of bolting extra capabilities for more advanced missions onto Clipper at a later date. Each orbiter was intended to make 25 flights prior to retirement. Topic. Using a space tug During autumn of 2005 Clipper's design was changed again. In order to fit the Clipper on the planned upgraded version of the Soyuz 2 rocket, labeled the Soyuz 2-3, Clipper would be split up into two spacecraft, the Clipper crew vehicle and Param Russ Ferry, a space tug. Param would have been a permanent orbital spacecraft awaiting Clipper in orbit, docking with it and then providing orbital maneuvering and boosting Clipper to higher orbits in order to dock with the International Space Station. The Param was planned to be indefinitely reusable, refueling itself via the cargo container, space station, or spacecraft that it is attached to. Topic. Final version of Energia's proposal 
The version of Clipper presented during the bid in January 2006 differs again from the original design. It showed a lifting body with larger wings, that, according to Energia officials, could be folded around the core crew module and unfold after atmospheric re-entry in order to provide cross-range and better landing accuracy for the spacecraft. The light clipper version proposed was stripped down to 7 tons and uses the split-up option with Param as a space dug. Topic. Missions The Clipper program was proposed as the Russian-European counterpart to the American Orion spacecraft and was therefore designed similar to the Orion to be part of a modular system that enabled it to be both a LEO shuttle-type vehicle as well as part of a spacecraft able to go beyond Earth orbit to the Moon and even Mars there were outline suggestions of lunar applications in September 2005. The modular design would have included the Clipper crew module and, depending on the mission, a mission module or propulsion module. Although far-fetched, this corresponds to announcements by the Russian Space Agency that according to a lunar mission study, using the Soyuz, a landing on the Moon could be achieved within the next decade. Information on Clippers beyond LEO mission capabilities were expanded further by RSC Energia, with a picture released in December 2005 of what a possible Clipper interplanetary configuration might have looked like. The design was entirely theoretical but made for a view of where RSC Energia saw the Clipper operating, and how it might have done so. This configuration was unlike anything seen so far for a manned space vehicle, with the solar arrays needed for electrical power vastly bigger than the habitable volume at the center. It was also unclear what the mode of propulsion was. The very large solar array suggested an ion propulsion system might have been contemplated for such a mission, though it might also simply be that there was another reason for such a large array, such as increased power for better telemetry transmission rates over large distances. Topic. Carrier rockets The present Soyuz rocket would not be able to lift Clipper into low Earth orbit, because the spacecraft the version designed without Param was expected to weigh between 13 and 14.5 metric tons with payload and crew, whereas Soyuz only has a lifting capacity of around 8 metric tons. It was originally planned to heavily enhance the Soyuz rocket, a project that was labeled the Onega rocket or Soyuz 3. Until fall of 2005 it was much more likely that Clipper would have used an Angara A3 rocket, which was scheduled to make its first launch in 2012 however the Angara program has been delayed and Angara A3 may not be developed in light of the funding of the development of Soyuz 2-3 or possibly a Zenit rocket that is built in Ukraine. At the end of 2005, Clipper's design was changed again as outlined above and the most likely solution for a carrier rocket became the Soyuz 2-3, an upgraded Soyuz 2 rocket. This enhanced Soyuz should have been able to launch Clipper into space because of weight reduction resulting in the use of the Param as a space tug. With regard to launch sites for Clipper, further information became available as of October 2005, with a planning stage declaration from Nikolai Moiseev, deputy director of the Russian Space Agency that Clipper could have been launched from ESA's Guiana Space Center in French Guiana. Though this aim had already been suggested, the comment was made in the context of facility upgrades for Kourou that are already underway since 2003 and are expected to be finished in 2007 with the first launch of a Soyuz rocket from French Guiana in 2008. It had been suggested that Clipper could have been launched from both Baikonur and Kourou, by Alan Thurkettel, head of ESA's Human Spaceflight, Microgravity and Exploration Directorate, in December 2005. Topic. See also Crew Exploration Vehicle, the American Counterpart Program Crew Space Transportation System CSTS European Counterpart Program with Russian Participation 
Federation spacecraft PPTS Rus Param Shuttle derived launch vehicle Hermes spacecraft Spaceplane <laughs>